Hello and welcome to another video on Azure Synapse Analytics and this is video two. Glad you make it back for the second one. If you missed the first one, make sure to go back and take a look at that one where we talk about why do we have Azure Synapse Analytics and all of the core technologies that are part of your ASA workspace. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and then also if you like it, make sure to check out our on-demand learning platform as well as those live boot camps that we do on Azure Synapse Analytics that really give you a deep dive into understanding the full ASA workspace from beginning to end and having a more comprehensive overview. Now in this video, I want to take a look at how to provision your Azure Data Lake and then how to provision your Azure Synapse Analytics workspace. So that is the goal of this video. So. First, what is Azure Data Lake? We talked about this previously, but Azure Data Lake is a place where we're going to store our organizational data, specifically in this use case here, the data that we're going to be using for analytical purposes. So all of the flat files, CSV files, Parquet files that have the data about our business operations, we're going to be storing that information in our data lake. And it gives us easy access from our notebooks or our pipelines or even our dedicated pool where we can access that information for analytical purposes. And the key element here is that when you provision an ASA workspace, it is required that every ASA workspace have a primary data lake attached to it. So that's what we're going to do first is we're going to create an Azure data lake. The other thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to provision our Azure Synapse Analytics workspace. There's a couple of requirements here, but not too many. First of all, the name must be globally unique across all of Azure. The reason for that is because a little known tip for you, when you provision ASA, the name of your Azure Synapse Analytics workspace is actually the name of your logical server that gets created. So when we provision ASA, a lot of things happen in the background. And one of those things is that it actually creates a SQL server logical server. And that's, we use that server name to connect to our dedicated pools and to connect to our serverless pool. We're going to get into that later. I'm looking forward to it. But for now, just know that that's why the name must be unique. We choose our subscription. That's how Microsoft knows how to bill us. We choose our resource group. That's where we keep those logical resources grouped together. And then we also will have to create a managed resource group. This is a managed resource group that's managed by ASA for specific tasks and operations that it does for you. We're going to have to tell it what location to put our resource group in or our Synapse Analytics workspace, which is pretty much going to be the same location I put my data lake. We'll dive into that a little bit later as well. It's very important the location where you choose to put your Azure resources. And the reason it's important, I won't go, I don't want to go too far in this class or in this video, but it's important for really three primary reasons. One, performance, right? Reducing the amount of latency, moving the data between data centers. Two, for security. If you keep them in the same location, it's easier to use like a virtual network on top of them. And then three is cost. There's actually an egress charge for moving data from like a data lake in one region to somewhere else. So location, location, location. You've heard it in real estate and now you've heard it in Azure Synapse Analytics. The Azure Data Lake is also what we need and that's required. And then we need to give it an admin username and password. Why? Because remember, we just talked about the name of your Synapse Analytics workspace is a logical server. And so to connect to that logical server, to see your serverless compute and also to see your SQL, uh, dedicated SQL pool, we have to log in with that username and password for now. We can change that later. That brings us to the end of the slide. Let's jump over to the Azure portal and start provisioning our resources. I'll see you there. So the first thing I want to do here is go to azure.com. If you're following along, you're probably thinking, Mitchell, I've, I'm new to Azure. I've never done anything with Azure before. I want to follow along, but I don't know what to do. Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is sign up for at least at minimum a free account at Azure. This is going to give you 30 days of Azure access, and it's going to give you a $200 credit, which will be more than enough for anything that I'm going to do in this series. But it does expire within 30 days. So then you'll have to put in your credit card and pay as you go. Hopefully your company will help you with that learning experience. But make sure to sign up here. Pause the video if that's what you need to do. Sign up, try Azure for free, and then you can follow along with the rest of my series. Now I'm going to go over to this other tab that I have open, and this is portal.azure.com. So portal.azure.com. Once you have a subscription, you can sign in. And once you sign into portal.azure.com, you're going to land right where I am here on the home page. Now on my home page, I have a bunch of different resources down here at the bottom. These are resources that I've worked with recently. 
And what we want to do for this demo, I want to jump right in. We want to go ahead and create an Azure Data Lake store, right? We know that we need that for our Synapse Analytics workspace. So I'm going to go over here to the very left and click create a resource. This is how, by the way, if you're doing this through the Azure portal, through the UI, which at first, most people, everybody's going to be doing it through the UI. You're not going to be doing it through PowerShell or Cloud Shell or anything like that. This is how you're going to create all of your resources right here. Create a resource. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to search for the resource that I want. So I'm going to search for, you would think Azure Data Lake, but it's not actually Azure Data Lake. We're going to search for storage account. Okay, so we're actually going to search for storage account. I'll choose that right there from the drop down. So if I want to create an Azure Data Lake Gen 2 account, which is what we want, we're going to have to do that by going through the service storage account. So I'll click right there. That brings me here, gives me some information about what we're doing. And then I'm going to go ahead and click create. Now, this is going to be a little bit overwhelming. I'm just going to be honest with you. When you come in here and you're creating resources for the first time in Azure, there's all these options and you're like, Mitchell, I don't know what to do. This is overwhelming. That's why taking a boot camp, taking some formal training can really set your mind at ease. But I'm going to try to do that throughout this series as well. So let's walk through just kind of setting this up and some of the features and some of the important aspects here. I'm going to talk about that. So for the subscription, I'm going to go ahead and choose my MSDN subscription through Visual Studio. And then for my resource group, I'm actually going to create a new one here. And I'm going to create a new resource group and I'll call this something like, I haven't really fully thought this out yet, but I'm going to call this something like what we're doing for YouTube. So this will be my ASA YouTube series. All right, so that's what I'm going to do for my resource group. And then I'm going to go ahead and call that okay. This does not have to be globally unique. So if you're following along, you can make your uh, resource group exactly the same name as mine, and that would be great. So we're going to go with ASA YouTube series. Now, the next thing I need to do is give my storage account a name. So the name that I'm going to go with here is probably going to be something like ASA YouTube, and then let's say uh, ADLS for Azure Data Lake Store. The storage account name does have to be all lowercase. You can't do a whole lot of crazy stuff with it. So that's what we're going to do there. And then for my region, I'm going to just go ahead and go with East US 2. And I'm pretty much going to put all of my resources as I go through here in the East US 2. I'm going to keep them in the same data center for all of the reasons that we talked about before, performance, cost, and security. For the performance, I'm going to go with standard. And then I'm actually going to change my redundancy here to local redundant storage. And what that does is it gives me three copies of my data lake inside of that data center. So if one data, you know, if one storage rack goes down, I have two more copies immediately available. However, if the entire data center goes down, I'm in trouble because I only got three copies. But this is test. This is episode two of our ASA series. So uh, local redundant storage is more than enough for what we need. And that's the minimum that you can really go with here. So we have that redundancy. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to advanced. Under advanced, there's a lot of intimidating stuff. What I would tell you is go ahead and go with the basics and the defaults for everything that you see right here. But what's very important is if you want to make this a data lake and not just a general purpose storage account, we have to click this checkbox right here, enable hierarchical namespace. This is what gives us that POSIX compliance. This is what gives us the access control list where we can do Azure Active Directory permissions on top of folders. This is important right here. So if you want those key elements that come with Azure Data Lake, you have to turn this on. And even if you don't want them, if you want to provision Azure Synapse Analytics, you have to have a data lake to do that. So we're going to create our data lake right here. All right, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. I think everything else that we see here is fine. So we're going to do, that's it. On the Advanced tab, click that button, and we're going to go to Networking. Now, Essentially, what I'm going to do under networking is this is for demo purposes. We're going to actually just leave it open to the public endpoint, meaning we're going to be able to connect from wherever without really running into any problems. Long term, what you can do is you can actually put this on like private network. You can lock this down. You can secure it to where it can only really work within your network, but we're going to keep it public for now. So nothing to change here on network security. So we're going to keep on going under data protection. This is where you can set up things like version control, soft delete. So if somebody deletes something, you have X number of days to recover it um, and things like that. There are some limitations with Data Lake versus a general purpose. So Data Lake doesn't have as many options. I'm going to once again stick to all of the default options that we see here. 
and then we're going to move on to the next tab which is encryption we're going to leave this as the default as well and then we're going to move on again and do tags and then review and create so a pretty simple process to create your data lake once again there is a ton of options in there that can be a little bit overwhelming all right so while that's provisioning here, the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and start actually creating our Azure Synapse Analytics workspace. And the ASA workspace is a little bit more involved than this was, but not too much more involved. But there are some key elements that I want to talk about when we get in there and start provisioning it. And these will have impacts down the road. So when I get into the individual pieces later on where I talk about the data lake and we look at security for the data lake and we look at things like that, I'm going to come back and talk on these topics in a little bit more depth. But for now, let's go back to create a resource. And this time I'm going to search for Synapse Analytics. And let me zoom in here on the screen. And we're going to do Synapse Analytics. And we'll go with Azure Synapse Analytics right here. So I'm going to choose Azure Synapse Analytics from that drop down. And then I'm going to click Create. All right. Now, once again, every time you create a resource, you always are going to have to tell it the subscription and you're always going to have to choose your uh, resource group. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription here. And then for the resource group, I'm going to choose right there at the top, my ASA YouTube series. That's awesome. And then you have to create a manage resource group. Now, you're not required to do this yourself, but if you don't create it yourself, Microsoft will create one and give it a crazy goo on the end. I don't want that. So I'm going to kind of tie this name since I'm only going to have one workspace. I'll just tie it to my regular resource group. So I'm going to go with ASA YouTube underscore series and then manage resource group. I'll put a little MRG on the end. So that way, when I'm inside of my subscription, I'll see this room and I see that one. And I know that it's tied to my ASA environment that's inside of that resource group the other thing i need to do here is go ahead and give my asa a workspace name now this name must be globally unique across all of azure meaning that you cannot name yours the same as mine and the, the a big reason behind that is because the name is how we actually connect to our asa workspace from outside of it this is actually the name of our logical server that's going to get created and so when you create databases later on in your asa workspace this name is how you connect to those databases. So it's very important that you choose a name that you want to use and that you understand that it is globally unique. And so once again, this is one I haven't really fully thought through that much, but it is going to be our Azure Synapse Analytics workspace. So I'm going to come in here and type in ASA and then YouTube and then uh, workspace, something like that. A lot of times I might put my initials on the end especially if I'm teaching the class live because students will still try to do the same thing as myself. But I'm not teaching it live, so I'm not worried about y'all copying my exact thing. Just know if you're trying to name it exactly the same as mine, you're going to need to make sure you put your initials on there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go with Region East US 2 again. And then it's asking me here, hey, what account name do you want to attach? So remember, this is Data Lake Gen 2 right here. What account name do you want to attach to this ASA workspace? And so I'm going to choose from my drop down here and I'm going to search for ASA. There it is right there. YouTube ADLS Azure Data Lake Store. And then it says, OK, well, you also have to create a file system name. So this is another requirement. I'm going to create new here and I'm going to just type in Synapse. All lowercase. I'm just going to type in Synapse and then click OK. Now, this part right here is very important. It says assign myself as the storage blob data contributor role on data lake gen 2 that's me elm pearson at pragmaticworks.com now you know that i just created the data lake and i know that i'm the owner of that data lake so you would think to yourself logically you'd say well i'm the owner i don't need to have some role called storage blob data contributor because i'm the owner i can do everything however that's not the way that asa sees it azure synapse analytics to do certain things later in this series you're going to need to be the storage blob data contributor on that data lake. So do not uncheck this box. Now, Microsoft might change this in the future. I hope that they do. But this is what's known as role based access control. This is how we apply a lot of security within the Azure portal is through roles. And so you have to give yourself this role, which is weird because I'm going to go and give it to myself. 
but you have to give yourself this role so you can do serverless SQL on demand within the workspace. And unfortunately, the error message that you get when you don't have this role in the workspace is like the file's already in use or something. It's weird. It's hard to debug, but just make sure you have this. Also, if you're adding other users to your Azure Synapse Analytics workspace later, you need to make sure to go over to your data lake and add them to that role. Once again, I'll cover this when we get to that part of the series and we talk about data lake and I'll show you how to do that so that you're comfortable with adding people from that perspective, okay? But this is important for now, so we're gonna leave that enabled. Now we're gonna go next to security. And under security, this is where I have to give this a username and a password. This is gonna be SQL Server authentication. Now you know from working with SQL Database or working with on-prem SQL Server, you have Azure Active. In the cloud, we have Azure Active Directory authentication and we have SQL Server authentication. So I might probably, I probably will show this later in the class, how to set up Azure Active Directory. It's super easy to do. You just have to choose an admin so I can assign myself. And then I can start logging in and doing all the things with my Azure AD account, Elm Pearson at PragmaticWorks.com instead of this account. Super easy to do. You do it right there from the Azure portal. But for now we have to provide this. So I'm gonna go admin user and then I'm gonna give this a password that I won't forget hopefully. There we go. I feel pretty good about that. And then everything else here, I'm going to leave with the defaults. And then we'll do next to go to networking. Now I did a 35 ish minute video that talks about the virtual, the managed virtual network. And I don't know if that's on the pragmatic works channel or if it's on my personal YouTube channel, which is YouTube forward slash C forward slash Mitchell Pearson but I'll probably do a remake of that video in this series for Pragmatic Works um, if it's not on the channel because I want to keep it updated. So for now, just know I'll talk about that later. Let's leave this disabled so that it's easier for us to work within kind of this proof of concept, this demo environment. And I'm going to allow all, so here it is again, I'm allowing all connections from all IP addresses. And the reason that's important is because remember, we're actually creating a logical SQL server here that's going to allow us to connect to our dedicated pools. So by allowing this, it means later on in this series, it's going to be easier for us to connect, right? We can turn that off at any time and we can start to lock this down. So don't worry about that. And I'm going to go next to tags and then reviewing create and then click create. And that's really it. That gets us to kind of the end of where I want to get to on this video. You shouldn't really run into any problems with deployment. I have seen some problems or opportunities where if you're working with a trial account, sometimes you'll try to provision this resource inside of the East US or South Central or whatever it is, and it fails just because that data center doesn't really have capacity and doesn't let trial users create new resources. So you might have to try, unfortunately, a couple of different regions if you're working with a trial account to make this work. But what should happen here is in a little bit, we're gonna get everything was created successfully, which is gonna include the logical server, the workspace, and all the other pieces that we need. And then we're good and we're ready to go to the next step, right? And the next step is gonna be jumping in here and navigating within the Azure Synapse Analytics workspace and actually starting to create items within that. And that's what we're gonna cover in the next video. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next episode.